On November 18, 2010, Rusty Steinerman had just dropped his two-year-old son off to Dunwoody Prep. Seconds later, shots rang out, and Steinerman lay bleeding in the parking lot. I saw there was a man on the ground. He would later die at the hospital. Just shocked that it happened here at a, a school. The next day, Dunwoody police released this sketch of the gunman, described as Middle Eastern, wearing what appeared to be a fake beard. He was last seen driving westbound on Mount Vernon. On November 22nd, Rusty's brother, Steve, made this impassioned plea for information. We need your help desperately. <clears throat> Any information, anything at all could help. Nearly a month and a half later, police announced they'd arrested Rusty's killer, Hemi Newman, a 48-year-old East Cobb father of three with no criminal history. We later learned Newman worked with Rusty Steinerman's widow, Andrea. Do you have anything to say to Andrea, your co-worker? At GE Energy. Our camera was there the very next day as police led Newman to his arraignment. On January 6th, our camera was also there as Dunwoody police towed the van Newman admits he used to get away from the crime scene. February 8, 2011, a DeKalb County grand jury indicted Newman on charges of malice murder and possession of a gun during the commission of a crime. On that same day, Andrea Steinerman released a written statement, her first since the murder, saying she was shocked to learn her boss and a friend would be responsible for Rusty's death. A month later, Newman's wife, Relly, filed for separation from her husband of 22 years. Unfortunately, the evidence is just overwhelming. And in May 2011, Mrs. Newman's attorney, Esther Panich, filed paperwork outlining allegations that Hemi Newman had been having an affair with Andrea Steinerman. On September 16, 2011, an about face. Newman admits he pulled the trigger, but now says he was insane and changes his plea to not guilty by reason of insanity. On October 28, 2011, we uncovered information that Newman had admitted he tried to kill Rusty the week before the murder. I don't know who the hell he is, and I don't want him by my house. And that Rusty had called police to report a suspicious man outside. Jury selection began February 13th of this year and went more quickly than both sides expected. Then, on February 21st, the trial began. I didn't know what happened to Rusty until I got to the emergency room. Jurors heard from the star witness herself, Andrea Snyderman who denied having an affair and called Hemi Newman a stalker. This is uh, inappropriate or had a verbal conversation. Oh, I understand. I respect your marriage, yet jab at my marriage, jab at my marriage, jab at my marriage. Why were you protecting the defendant? I was not. Why didn't you mention his name? Nearly three weeks later, both the defense and prosecution closed out their case just as they had begun it. A verdict of not guilty by reason of insanity is a verdict that says that Andrea Snyderman is responsible for the death of her husband. Pointing fingers at Andrea Snyderman. Either the angel and the demon were talking to Hemi and telling Hemi to kill Rusty or the demon that he was sleeping with. Which one is more likely? That it's these imaginary beings, oh, no, 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 I see dead people, they're telling me to kill people. Or was it the woman who stood to gain $2 million and he did too? And right now, Channel 2's Mike Patenik is standing outside the courthouse with more on this breaking news. And let's go to him right now for more insight on what's happening right now. Mike. Fred, certainly a sense of anticipation building both outside the DeKalb County Courthouse and inside of it. If you want to take another live look inside of that courtroom, Judge Gregory Adams' courtroom, you can see an assemblage of people in the gallery. They will eventually bring Hemi Newman in. His attorneys, Doug Peters and Bob Ruman, are there. On the other side, you have Don Geary, Chief Assistant Prosecutor, and Robert James, the District Attorney here in DeKalb County. Rusty Snyderman's family is here. They flew down from Cleveland, his mother, his father, his brother, and sister-in-law. Hemi Newman's mother is also here in the courtroom. We have not seen Andrea Snyderman as of yet. You may recall she was booted from this courthouse during the trial itself because of allegations she was tampering with witnesses. We have not seen nor heard from her since that date that she was kicked out of the courthouse. Let's take another look at the options, Fred, that uh, the jury will uh, be looking at and what we will learn in just a few minutes. Number one is not guilty by reason of insanity. You will recall he changed his plea mid-course. Uh, if that is the verdict, then Hemi Newman would go to a mental facility for upwards of 30 days. A doctor would evaluate him. Then he would come back to the court and a doctor would tell Judge Gregory Adams whether Hemi Newman should be committed for a period of time. The judge would be the ultimate arbiter as to whether he goes free. 
If he's not, then he will go back to a mental health facility and receive treatment. The jury could also find him guilty but mentally ill. That means that he would go to prison, but he would be eligible for mental health treatment to help him with his bipolar disorder and the delusions that his attorneys uh, told the jury uh, that he is suffering from. The jury could also just find him outright guilty, and that is what prosecutors asked them to do. If he is found guilty, there will be a sentencing hearing in which uh, there will be victim impact statements. We understand that Rusty's brother Steve is going to address the judge about the suffering uh, that his family has gone through, and they will be asking uh, for that sentencing recommendation. Fred. And Mike, uh, you alluded to it. This has been anything but your average trials getting national uh, attention. We've, there's been talk of, of angels and, and demons, and you mentioned the victim's widow being kicked out of the, the courtroom as we take a live look at that courtroom right there as where the jury will sit. What, what do you make? You've been at this trial covering it from the very beginning. What do you make of all that you've seen so far? Yes, yeah, certainly a lot of twists and turns that we did not anticipate going into this trial. It seemed like every day there was another bombshell, more explosive testimony, starting off with a big bang, of course, hearing from Andrea Steinerman herself, testifying she didn't learn that her husband had been shot until she got to the hospital. But then a few days later, we hear from two other witnesses who say, no, she called me on the phone on her way to the hospital well, to tell me garage. that Rusty had been shot. Uh, that is what uh, the prosecution uh, seized upon in their closing argument, so calling her him. a co-conspirator yep. in this case. Uh, and that has a lot of people wondering whether she is next to face charges. Uh, it's interesting to note, Fred, yesterday uh, we received word that she has retained two new attorneys, one of whom is a former DeKalb County prosecutor uh, who you would imagine specializes in criminal law uh, to handle whatever might come her way uh, should the DA decide to pursue charges. Okay.